Welcome to Shiloh tonight. How's everybody doing tonight? Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday afternoon? Amen. Let's please stand to our fleet, feet, fleet, feet. We're going to take flight here in a little while, but that's from my, I got my F and my L's, but let's sing about that day we fly away. said thought hath not entered man's mind amen but I've seen I've seen with my physical eye I've seen it I've seen it I remember praying God I want to see you I want to see you God I was so jealous of these people that was having these dreams Keith they'd tell me I'd hear preachers talk about having a vision of heaven and seeing those streets of gold, seeing that illuminating light. And I'm like, God, what is wrong with me? Why can't I see it? I just want to dream it, Lord. I want to see it. I want you to envision me, Lord, with that. I remember praying and praying and praying and praying. And on January the 8th, 6 o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday evening, standing at the foot of my daddy's bed, I saw it. My daddy hadn't set up in probably seven, eight years. 
without the aid of a pull bar over his bed. I'm sitting it, standing at the foot of his bed. Spirit of the Lord swept in that room. My daughter sitting on one side and Ashley sitting on the other side. They're holding his hands. Remember, he hadn't set up in probably seven, eight years without the aid of a pool ball. Paralyzed on this side. Every time he'd get that hand up above his face, it'd fall back and hit him in the face. He could raise it up, but he had no control of it once he got it up. The Holy Ghost blew in that room. My aunt, standing beside of the bed, began to speak in tongues, and the interpretation was Psalms 23. God began to bear it out in my spirit. I'm standing there quoting as she's speaking in tongues, quoting the interpretation of Psalms 23. And I watched my daddy when his eyes popped open, hadn't been open in about a week. His eyes popped open as big as I've ever seen them. And when his eyes fixed on the master, <laughs> oh, I didn't get to see him face to face because the Bible said no man sees God and lives. <laughs> but I saw the reflection in his eyes when I saw him when he caught a glimpse of his Savior. And spontaneously in that moment of a twinkling of an eye, I saw him when he lunged forward in that bed, literally took them two granddaughters of his arms up with them, extended out towards his master. And in one gasp, that spirit left that body and went with the Lord with a smile on his face as that corpse collapsed back in that bed. Oh, I wouldn't take nothing for that moment. Seeing the image in his eye when he saw Jesus. Every one of us, large or small, in this building or viewing on our church, there's going to come a day. There's going to come a moment in the twinkling of an eye when every person is going to give an account for their life's deeds. You've heard me talk about his struggles, but let me tell you what happened in that moment. In that moment, Jesus Christ stepped between him and God. I've used that illustration so many times. And in that moment, the Father saw nothing but the Son, the spotless Lamb. It's going to happen to every one of us one day. We're going to see him. We're going to behold his glory. Hallelujah. And the Bible said when, when that happens, we're not going to live no more in this life. The Bible said no man sees the Father and lives. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said when you see me, you see him. And when you see him, you see me. So in that moment when my daddy caught a glimpse of God the Father in his son, there was no more life to be on this earth. Oh, he's coming back just like he said, church. Ready or not, he's coming back. Are you going to be ready in that moment? Because you're going to see him. I promise you, you're going to see him. And when you see him, you'll live no more in this present life. Is it going to be well done? is it going to be depart from me choice is yours and you get to choose tonight but in that moment you will not choose the decision will already be made Woo! I don't know what that does for you but I'm so excited I can't hardly stand it I'm ready to see him amen I'm ready to see him in all of his glory I'm ready to see him heavenly father we just welcome you in this place tonight I'm thankful, God, that you've made a way and His name is Jesus. The Bible said no man can come unto you except the Spirit draw him. And the access has been provided in your only begotten Son. His name is Jesus. There is no other way by which means man can come unto God. You've given us a doorway and access into the throne room of heaven. You rent that veil and you open it up that we could come boldly into your presence through and by the blood of the Lamb. God, I'm so thankful tonight for who I am in you. <laughs> oh, redeemed by the Lamb of God in all my imperfections and all my faults and in all my failures. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb in His perfection. 
in his perfectness and in his oneness with God. God, I thank you, Lord, tonight. There are many around us, God, that need a touch. There are many around us tonight that are sick and battling. We intercede on behalf of every single one of them. But the greatest need in the body of Christ and the greatest need in the world around us today is salvation. There is no greater need. For I can go to heaven sick, but I'll never go to heaven lost. I thank you, Lord, that you've made a way for me. I'm so grateful tonight, God, that you've opened up the windows of heaven and bid me to come. And not me only, but whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, God is good. God is good, church. He's good. Amen. Why don't you give him a hand clap of praise tonight as you rejoice in his presence. Amen. Before you see it, just throw up that hand. Go ahead and love your neighbor from a distance. It's all right to love them, amen. Oh, that's how Jesus said we'd be notified, by how we would be identified, how we would be recognized as who we are by the love that we have one for another. Amen. It's so good to see you all in the house of the Lord tonight. There are many about us. We want to continue to be praying for our young people and our children as, as uh, they're battling their way back through school now. And... Uh, uh, we just believe in God, amen, for, for some miracles, amen. We've already claimed those things and believe in God for it, amen. Uh, many around us that are sick and suffering, continue to keep all of them in your prayers. We have good news. Good news is Sunday morning right here at 1030 in this building, the Bonnie English Family Singers are going to be with us. And I've uh, been communicating with them faithfully now, I guess, for about two months. And Talk with them again this week, and they are so excited to be coming down Altry Mill Road, praying and believing God for an outpouring of His Spirit right Amen. here in this house. Amen. I just want to encourage you, if you've got family members, co-workers, friends, neighbors, maybe someone you think wouldn't normally come to church, why don't you invite them to come this Sunday? Amen. Giving you a perfect opportunity to invite somebody. Maybe it's a next-door neighbor. Maybe it's a neighbor at work. Maybe it's somebody you've been wanting to uh, give an invitation to and you just got, hadn't got around to it. God's given you a free ticket this Sunday. Amen. Bless somebody with the gift of the love of Jesus Christ and uh, invite them to come be a part of your fellowship this coming Sunday morning. We're looking forward to what God's going to do in the house of the Lord. A quick reminder, uh, board members, I need to see you immediately following service tonight up here in the choir, I guess, for... I shouldn't take just a, uh, just a few moments, but if you'll give me a few minutes of your time, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Amen. So good to see you all in the house of the Lord tonight. We've come to worship the Lord. Amen. We want to do that together right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sing along tonight. So despised by the world 
as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. And so I'll cherish the Oregon cross to my trophies at last I lay down. And I will cling to the Oregon cross. And he changes something for a crown. In that old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. What was on that old cross, my Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the song they used to sing at my home church. I traded my nothing for his everything. Amen. Praise God. Victorious. We're victorious, church. Amen. I mean, we are victorious. The Bible declares that we are more than conquerors. Amen. So here we are tonight discussing... One simple word, victorious. Let me begin with a thought from Bishop Leslie Newbidgen as he summarized a critical insight 
for our understanding of Jesus and the New Testament. In one of his many books, and I quote, the resurrection was not the reversal of a defeat, but the manifestation of a victory. I just want to say that again. The resurrection was not the reversal of a defeat. I just want you to know when Jesus died on Calvary, God didn't say, "Uh uh-oh, what are we going to do now? I I just want you to understand that when Jesus gave up the ghost and said, it is finished, God didn't say, okay, let's figure out what to do now. No, no, the resurrection was not the reversal of a defeat, but it was the manifestation of a victory. You see, the cross was not a defeat. Rather, taken together, the cross and the resurrection are the greatest victory to have taken place in the history of this world. It is a victory that has huge implications for our lives now, our society, and the future of this world. The idea of victory can have notes of pride if we're not careful. However, victory is not a negative word in the Bible. Even in the New Testament, the key to a right understanding of victory is to see it as a gift made possible through our Lord Jesus Christ. So why don't we hear what the Word of God says about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57. And I want you just to hear this verse. And it simply says, but thanks be to God. Amen. We're talking about a victory now. And it begins when it says, But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, I want to tell you, we're victorious because of what Jesus did. We are victorious because of what He accomplished. We are victorious because of the price that Jesus paid. We are victorious, and the cross was not a defeat. But I just want to tell you, the cross taken with the resurrection is the greatest victory of all time. So tonight, we want to discuss a couple of things. And what we want to look at is we want to look at victory in your heart. Amen? Because guys, I want to just tell you tonight, the Bible declares that it comes out of the heart. It flows out of the heart, and there just needs to be a settledness deep within our heart and in our spirit, man. I was just sitting over there a while ago, and I was watching Nathan as he had an audience of one. And, and I don't mean this through di- no disrespect, but I'm just telling you, he won't sing to us. He was singing to the audience of one. And I, I just thought about watching this exposition of worship what worship really looks like. And in that engulfing of that worship, which we glorify and honor God through, as I saw him just singing the lyrics of that song and seeing the expression of gratitude that was rolling out of his heart into the presence of a true and living God, I thought to myself, there's victory in that heart. Amen. Amen. There's an overcoming victory In that heart, may we go on to say the biggest battle goes on in our hearts and in our minds. You you know, we've been talking a little bit about that mind thing over the last uh, few Sundays now. You see, this is where the victory is won or lost. God is not only concerned about your actions and your words, but also about your inmost being. God watches and examines us inside and out. Amen. Look at what Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27 says tonight because he examines us. The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's innermost part. I realize it says inmost, but it's just easier for me to say innermost. The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord. You you realize when Jesus moved into your life, into your life. there was a lamp that was lit inside of you. 
and it illuminates everything that is going on inside of you. Amen. It sheds light on one's innermost part. I'm just telling you tonight, if you're saved, there's no way you can be broken. Hello? If you're really saved tonight, you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're an overcomer. Now, wait a minute, preacher. There are times when I feel broken. When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm broken, preacher. Okay, I get that. But then let's hear what Jesus said. Jesus said these words. Yet... Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow. He said, you're going to walk there. But yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. I'm with you. I'm going there with you. I'm not expecting you to go there alone. Amen. Sammy, can I just say to you tonight, he's walking there with you. Brother, your pain is real. Others in this room right now, we've got joy, has lost her stepdad just... Just this week, the day, I guess, day, I think it was, I got the news. I heard today, anyhow. They're family members of this church. And when they weep, when Sammy weeps, I weep. When Joy weeps, I weep. Because that's what God says for us to do. They are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But our weeping is not the end story. This is the story. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. My rod and my staff, they're there to comfort you. Amen. So in the midst of my pain, God shows up and He produces a victory in my heart that I don't even know how to explain other than the fact, God, I know you're real. Amen. I know you're real. I know you're here because I sense you in this place of pain. The pain is real But the God that we serve that brings victory into our heart is just as real as the pain is. Amen? And that understanding tonight produces the victory in your heart because that battle goes on between the heart and the mind. But this is where the victory is won or lost, God says. Amen? He says He examines not only our inside part, but he examines our motives behind that. Look at Proverbs 21 and verse 2. It says, A person may think their own way are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. Amen? God is concerned about that heart in there. Amen. And there are times, amen, when my heart is broken, but God knows what's there. And what is there is the fertileness of the power of Almighty God that is able to sustain me through whatever situation that I may have to walk through. Amen. Clean living before God and justice with our neighbors means far more to God than religious performances. Did you hear that? I I, I want to make sure you did hear that. Clean living before God and justice with our neighbors means far more to God than religious performances. You see, the lamp of the Lord searches the human spirit. It searches out the inmost being. Amen. I try to pray regularly as the psalmist prayed, Search me, O God, and see if there is any wicked way in me. The good news is I can also pray for others in this same manner. It's a very useful verse when we look at Proverbs 20 and verse 27. If someone feels that they're wrestling with something they can't quite put their finger on, I ask the Spirit of God to search their heart to reveal if there is any sin that needs to be dealt with. Amen. A person may think that their own way is right, but the Lord weighs the heart. He searches our heart. He leads us. And can I just remind you, God ain't never going to go against His Word. Amen. God ain't changed His mind about His Word. Amen. You know why? Because he said, I'm the same yesterday, today, forever. I ain't changed my mind about the Word. Amen. And so the Word is the integrity of our relationship with God. Lord, allow your lamp to shine again and reveal if there's anything else that needs to be dealt with. Why? Why? Because Jesus' victory over sin on the cross where there is repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, there can no longer be any condemnation. Amen? Jesus said it like this, Whom the Spirit says free is what? 
They're free indeed. Amen. Church, we got to just start walking in the avenue and in the way in which God declared that we are. Amen. How many times and how long did I struggle with my past and who I used to be? But you know what God said? When I made you free, you were free indeed. And now there's no longer any condemnation there. Amen. When your heart gets right, oh, hallelujah. Michelle, I thought about your daddy today when I read that verse of Scripture. Because I, I thought about, I thought about Michelle's dad, probably one of the one of the finest gentlemen I've ever met in my life. Just a, a good, upright businessman, one of the hardest working men. I never heard anybody say anything but good about the man. But up until just a, a what, a year and a half, two years ago. He was, he was lost. Didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but was a, 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 a gem of an individual. A family is praying. And you know, it's so hard many times for an individual that is that kind of person. You, you know, when you're, when you're mean as a snake, you know you're lost. Amen. When you look at yourself and you realize how lost you are, you know you're lost. There's no. But guys, I'm going to tell you, when you're just a good person, and a lot of times the enemy will come in and say to people like that, well, you know what, you're better than half the people to go to that church. And you know what, in a lot of cases, the devil may be right. But without a relationship with Jesus Christ, we can't have peace in our heart. Amen. But my Lord, how mercy. <laughs> when God made his way into that heart, whew, you're talking about a whole countenance change. I seen a gem of a man turn into a saint right in front of my very eyes. Just watching the Spirit of God illuminate out of him. Just seeing the glow when he talked about God and what God had done for him. Just, just seeing that and experiencing it. Now let me, just, let me just get this out here tonight. Because this, this is really troubling me, church. I'm talking about, I'm talking about tonight being victorious and, and, and having victory in your heart. I've been having a conversation with a person and I'm, 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 I'm trying to witness and lead this person uh, into the presence of God. And this person's been hurt deeply. And can I just say he didn't get hurt at the bar? He didn't get hurt at the nightclub? He got hurt at church. Now, if we be open and honest with us, there are a lot of people out there in the world tonight that don't come to church because they were hurt at church. Now, listen, I'm not making excuses because I shared with this guy today, and this is what I said to him. I said, listen, if you go to Pete's Inn, and I'm not advertising for nobody, and I'm not throwing nobody down, I just used a couple of places, so y'all forgive me. I said, if you go to Pete's Inn this coming Sunday, and you have lunch, and you go in, and it's the worst service you've ever had in your life, pizza's cold, it's not fit to eat, and you say to yourself, I ain't never coming back here again. I said, the next Sunday when your family's hungry, you're not going to say, well, look, we're just never going out to eat again because we had a bad experience. I said, no, you're going to go to the Cracker Barrel down the street somewhere else. You may go across town, another town, and go to a different pizza inn, but you're going to find somewhere to go. And I said, listen, that's not who God is. Hello? That's not who God is. And when you're hurt, that's one of the worst hurts in the world to be hurt at the very place where you should be being blessed and be being encouraged. Now, guys, I just want to tell you, what he had done, I couldn't do. But he just made a mistake. Or maybe it wasn't a mistake for him. It was a choice that he made. And good-meaning church people took out a vengeance on a moat in their brother's eye rather than tending to, I'm still talking about being victorious, rather than tending to a beam that is in our own eye, because can I just say it one more time, even though it's Wednesday night, there are no big eyes and little U's in the kingdom of God. And if there's any man or woman that walks in this room tonight and says that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm all that and a bucket of nails, I just want to tell you, you're a sinner by nature. And outside the very grace of God, there is no forgiveness for you. 
and the only way you're going to go to heaven is through and by a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not by correcting everybody else in the world. Amen? And church, I want to tell you something. When you're seeing people sitting there having a conversation with you, weeping over how they've been hurt at church, it boils my blood. Because I'm thinking to myself, here we are as a body of believers doing everything we know to do, looking for one more. And I don't want to be a stumbling block to anyone. Amen. I want to be able to stand in the presence of God one day and hear Him say to me, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Well, preacher, I know what God's Word says. I know what God's Word says too. Amen. If y'all want to debate that, we'll take a little time later on after church. Amen. I got a little time. I just want to tell you, we got to love people. Amen. Because everybody is not on the same level that you're on. Amen. And it's okay to give them the Word of God, but when you give them the Word of God, you better give them the Word of God in love and then let the Holy Ghost do what it needs to do because that ain't my job nor your job. Amen. God called us to be fishers of men, ain't called us to clean up no fish. He just said fish for them, amen. You produce the fish, I'll do the rest. Amen. And amen, that's good preaching. Yes, amen, amen, and amen. I'm not on a hobby horse tonight. I'm talking about having real victory in your heart so when you stand in the presence of a true and living God that you'll be able to look Him in the face and hear Him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Church, I want to tell you, if we're running people off from the very place that they need to be when they're lost and undone, amen, we need to have compassion on them. We need to be long suffering with them. We need to be gentle with them and then we need to step back and let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost does. Amen. It ain't my plan. I've had a lot of people say, Preacher, ain't you going to straighten that out? Oh no, I'm not. Amen. I'm going to pray and the Holy Ghost will straighten it out. Amen. Amen. It ain't your job. Amen. It ain't my job. It's the Holy Ghost's job. Amen. I'm talking about having real victory. You see, victory for a king, or we may say for a leader, comes through love and faithfulness. Love and truth from a good leader, sound leadership is founded on loving integrity. Amen. The leader's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a, a water course wherever he pleases. You see, God is in ultimate control of our hearts. I want to be able to say that I've trusted this promise many times in my life when praying about circumstances and decisions and events. Thankfully, the heart of, of, that has been extended to God's hands and God will direct in whichever way that He pleases. Amen. You see, the heart is so important. All your ways seem right to you, but the Lord weighs the heart to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Amen? Since victory is a gift from God, it should never lead to pride. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked are sin. Lord, I pray that you would shine your light in, or your lamp into my heart today and search out my inner being. Amen? Thank you for the gift of forgiveness, freedom, and victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. How can any of us sit in this building tonight and lift a hand to our Lord and Savior? No, not one outside of the grace and the mercies of Almighty God. And then there's victory over death. Because see, guys, I want to tell you, when you get victory in your heart, you can have victory over death. Amen. Amen. But you see, many people think that death is the end. They believe death always has the last word, that death in the end will be victorious. Not so, declares the Apostle Paul. Amen. He said death had been swallowed up where? In victory. <laughs> you know where that victory was provided? At the cross of Calvary. Amen and amen. Amen. He taunts death. Amen. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Amen. I don't know if I give it to you or not, but you can find it in 1 Corinthians 15, 54, and 55. 
I, I just want to tell you that. He just throws it out there. He said, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Amen. Well, death is your victory. Well, death is your sting. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You see, there are three things that can give you uh, in response to this amazing gift of victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. First off, you do it by giving thanks. I'm doing my best to hurry. Where old death is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I like what evangelist David Watson said. He told the story of when he was called into the garden by his frightened child of the daughter who was being chased by a bee. He wrapped his arms around her and then she felt his body go tense. He let her go and he said to her, You need not worry anymore, darling. The bee has stung me. On the cross, it was as though Jesus wrapped his arms around us and took the sting of death for us. Yes, we still die. Jesus doesn't return first, but for everyone trusting in Christ, the sting of death has been removed through the cross and the resurrection. And as David Watson said to his daughter, bees don't sting twice, thank God. Hallelujah. Church, I just want to tell you, death can't sting you no more because it left its stinger in God. Only begotten Son. Yes, we must give thanks and then we must give ourselves. Do you sometimes whether what you're doing in serving God is really making a difference and are you tempted to think that it may all be waste of time and effort? I'm sure the devil's told every one of us that. Be encouraged. For nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. Why? Because Paul writes that the appropriate response to the victory of Jesus is to stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Get up and get on with the work of the Lord. That is the work that the Lord has called you to do. Do not be worried or threatened by what others are up to in different ministries. Different people have different callings. It's not for us to judge they're seeking to serve God and possibly even in a different way. But each of us should follow God's call in our own lives. Give yourself fully to whatever it is that God has called you to do. Why? Because of the resurrection you can stand firm and know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. While we're giving, why don't we just give a little money then? You see, part of giving... Yourself to the work of the Lord is through giving of your money. According to 1 Corinthians 16 and 2, you see, we see here a number of principles of Christian giving. First, it is primary for God's people, that is the church. Second, it should be regular on the first day of each week. And third, everyone, each of you, should be involved. Fourth, it should be keeping with your income. Be as generous as you can. Then we're able to say, Father, I've never thanked you enough for the gift of victory through the Lord Jesus Christ over sin and the law and death. I rededicate my life to you, God, my money, and my everything I have to do the work, Lord, that you've called me to do. Anybody want to just say amen to that, Lord? Amen. My Lord, how mercy. What a great testimony to be able to say. Lord, I just want to, my Lord, I think about that, and I think about it, and I think about it. The conversation that Calvin Parker had with me just a few days before he died, he said, Preacher, I just want you to pray that tomorrow, if I'm not able to tell him how much I love him, I want him to know I still love him that much. Amen. Amen. That's what I call fully involved. Amen. Having the victory of God in your life. Amen. In closing, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. It says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. 
Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen and amen. Will you stand to your feet? Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Amen. I didn't say that. God did. There's some times, guys, when all you know to do is stand. And when you've done all you know to do, the Bible said stand, therefore. You want to know how to be victorious? Amen. I'm I'm talking about really being victorious. Jesus said it like this, that he has provided for us victory over death. Think about that. Over death over hell and over the grave. It's what He provided for us. I heard one man describe this. I used it at least at one funeral of a child. He said he had often wondered what it was really like to lay down in this present life and to wake up in the next life in the Father's house. The little girl that was dying with cancer had asked her dad, what's it going to be like, Daddy? I'm at peace with God, but there's an uncertainty in my heart to what it's going to be like. And the daddy said he had no words. So he went to bed that night and he prayed and he prayed. And he said, God, give me something to give my baby. She declares that she believes in you and that it's all is well between you and her. But she just don't understand what it's going to be like. How can I know what to say? And when he woke up the next morning, he walked in her bedroom and he said, Baby... He said, the Lord visited me last night and reminded me of something. You remember over the years when you would go to sleep at Grandma's house. You were safe there and you were as comfortable there as any place you could be. Me and Mama would be off and we'd leave you at Grandma and Grandpa's house and you'd lay down there and go to sleep with all the love surrounding you that grandparents could offer. In, nestled in your own little bed there at their place. You felt right at home, didn't you, babe? Yes, yes, Daddy, many times. No fear, no anxiety. That's right, Daddy. But after you were asleep, your Daddy, you know what God says? Through the Son, you're able to cry, Abba, Father. While you were asleep resting, your daddy would walk in and pick you up. Unaware to you because you felt safety and comfort in those arms, I'd bring you home, take you upstairs without you even being alarmed and would lay you down in your bed. You didn't wake up frightened or afraid because when you woke up the next morning, you went to sleep in one place of safety and you woke up in the Father's house. Baby, that's exactly what it's going to be like when He comes and gets you. You're just going to go to sleep right here in the presence of the loved ones, those that are around you, and the Father's going to come and pick you up and take you home. And when you wake up there, you're going to wake up in the Father's house. We're victorious, church. Oh, death, where is your sting? Let me tell you where the sting is. It's in the trap that the enemy sets. That's set to kill, steal, and to destroy. But the Lord says, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. 
So God the Father gave His only begotten Son to become a bridge over death that you could walk from this life into the next. We're victorious, church. But the only way you're going to be able to access that is by the Son. Because if the Son is not in place over your life, there's a death trap set for you. Dear Heavenly Father, as we bow our eyes in your presence, I thank you for the victory there is in Christ Jesus. I thank you for the bridge that you sent called Jesus that suspended over death, hell, and the grave that gave us access to walk from this life into the next. Oh, what hope there is in Jesus. Laying down here in the presence of those that we love in the place of safety that we know, but open our eyes in the Father's house because Jesus made a way. But not everybody's going that way because not everybody knows Jesus. So can I just invite you to get to know Him tonight? Preacher, how do I do that? You just simply invite Him into your heart and your life. Confess that you're a sinner and you need a Savior. Invite Him to come in and make His abode with you. And I believe the Lord will say that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Could I encourage you to call on Him tonight? Could I encourage you to buy the ticket? What's it cost? It costs me nothing. I get to trade it for His everything. I give Him my life, which don't even belong to me now. I say to you, Lord, I need you. I believe you. I invite you in. If you'll do that, friend, He'll come. He says, because if you draw nigh unto him, he will in no wise cast you out. You draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. You pray and he'll come. You ask and he'll give. It's just that simple. If you're watching through our church tonight and you've done that, could I just encourage you to send us a little note and say, I prayed that prayer and I believe it tonight. If you're in this room and you've done it, would you just say, hey, I've done it. Hey, man, I've done it. I've done it. I've invited him into my life. Man, he'll walk with you all the days of your life. He come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. May God richly bless you tonight. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget Sunday morning, Bonnie English family singers. Amen. Board members, I need.